Hello Drone Racers, I'm Mark and today on Drone Racer 101 we're going to take a look at what might actually get me to use a simulator. If you're a free sky flyer like me, you probably run into the problem of trying to find a cable to connect to your computer. And once you do get it connected, it seems like it's not in the right place. I have both an X9D where here it has the simulator port on the back and every time I want to set my radio down, it's, it's in the way, it's sticking out. So I set the radio up which is probably the better option for me. With the QX7, that same port is on the bottom, so then if I want to set my radio up, I can. I have to set it down. And just, I, it seems like I always want to set it the opposite way of what I'm able to, depending on what radio I'm using. Plus these both use mini USB cables, which are not used by hardly anything anymore. I do have nice long cables that I bought for them, so at least I've got long cables, but like, I don't, I don't know where they are at the moment. I just reworked this office area and I have no idea where they are. So if I want to use one of those for a simulator, I'm out of luck. But that's okay because I would probably use this, my new uh, X-Lite radio, which thankfully they finally changed and it uses a micro USB on the bottom, which is great because I'm never going to try and set this this way. It, it, it doesn't work. I'm going to set it this way so the cord's never in the way, but it's still poking me and it's in the way. So now Free Sky has given us a different and even better option. This is the Free Sky XSR SIM. This is exactly what it looks like. This is an XSR receiver built into a USB port. There's no antenna sticking out. It's gonna be short range, but I mean, really, who cares? It's just an XSR receiver and it connects to your computer. It'll show up as a joystick in your computer and you bind your radio to this, so you have no cords at all. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the process. I'm gonna set up my radio for working with this because I wanna do it just a little bit different than my other models. I don't really have to though. I guess there's no reason to do that. So if you're using a cable with your radio, I recommend setting up a specific model and turning off both the internal and external radios for it. There's no reason to have those on, it'll save battery power. You do need your FreeSky D16 protocol transmitter enabled for this because that's what it will connect to. But if you already have one that you use for all of your models, that'll work just fine. You can bind it right to this. Let's take a look at setting this up, which is kind of ridiculously easy. And then we'll take a look at the radio. So I'm going to go through this real quick because this is set up exactly the same way as any other model for this radio and I've got a video for that specifically. So I'll just show you what I've got. I did set up a SIM. I could use this XSR telemetry and it would work just fine. But here I've got the SIM and I have it set to D16. I do have it set to channels 1 through 16. Um, I could change it to 1 through 8 for less latency but honestly I couldn't really tell. And I am using my internal antenna, which is perfect on this. There's no need at all for an external antenna. The only other things I have is I have my four switches set up for output. So I have eight channels and then I have those set up through channels five through eight. So they actually output and that's all it takes on this radio. You don't really have to do anything else. So for the module itself, there's a little triangle button here. You can just see, and if you click it, that presses down the bind button. So you press that down and plug it into your USB port and then it will look just like a standard receiver. There's a red and a green light. On my radio I go to bind just like you would setting up a regular model. And now you'll see it's flashing. Turn them both off or go back to your model on your radio and here just unplug this and plug it back in. And there we're bound, green light. So now here in Windows, I'm gonna check and make sure it's shown up correctly. So I'm gonna do that just by going to the Windows key. I'm in Windows 10 here and just typing in joystick, which will bring up USB game controllers, which is what this is. Over here, it will show me Free Sky Simulator. That's really nice. It shows me actually exactly what it is. So there's no confusion at all. It doesn't show up as just like generic Windows joystick or something. So I just downloaded the latest version of Velocidrone last night. So this is probably what you're seeing if you're looking at this when it's new. I'm also gonna tell you right up front that my computer is not powerful enough to make this recording smooth. So your what you're seeing is not gonna be nearly as smooth as what I'm seeing. My computer just can't handle it. If you're flying this, the radio doesn't make your simulator bad or anything. If you've not used Velocidrone, real quick, we'll go into controller. Um, I have set up 
these switches. You do that by, if I remove one here, we'll just show you on a sign. We just center the sticks here. And once that timer runs out, we just push up the throttle. Now there's a model in the upper right hand corner right there that you can just make sure that everything's working, make sure my yaw is right, and make sure my pitch and roll are right. If they're wrong, you can actually switch them by clicking that thing, and then it will uh, switch your roll. So I'll turn that back off so my roll is right. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so now we'll go in and take a look at a model. We'll use a chameleon for this because why not? Select scenery. The city works fine. I don't live in a city like this, so I don't get the opportunity to fly in a place like this very often. That's kind of fun in a simulator. So now, though, I can just go fly, and I don't have to worry about where I want to hold my radio, what I want to do with it, what works out best for me. I can crash into a building. That's one of the joys of a simulator here. So I can go up, and I don't have to feel like I'm tethered. I didn't have to worry about what... Uh, oh, wait, am I right there? Yeah, there we go. Um, that's the worst dive ever. So I didn't have to find the cable. Now you still do have to keep track of the XSR sim. If you lose that, then uh, that yeah, whatever. Um, if you lose that, then you're out of luck. So you will want to keep track of that. You may want to just keep it on your in your computer all the time. It probably wouldn't hurt anything. Now, if you have a Mac that you use that you want to use this for, in Windows it just showed up automatically for me. Um, if you have a Mac, you will need to load the driver that is on the USB stick itself. So you'll be good to go there. I don't think I have enough camera angle. I, you, I'm going to change that. But the other thing is, I'm looking at the screen, so it just doesn't feel quite right. So I can hook this up to goggles, and let's try that real quick just to see if it works. Okay, I only have six minutes left, but I've got a few. Can get a few flights in with the goggles, which just look way better. Now I need a longer cord because see this cord, this cord is not long enough. But uh, it allows me to fly through the city and it feels much better, much more realistic to flying than looking at a monitor. I never really care for looking at monitors. I'm gonna say it's really comfortable with these goggles. I've actually filmed this like five times trying to get this working right because the recording software does not like me playing games while it records. It's not a gaming PC. But now this does work, and I kind of like it. So at least the radio, I don't have to worry about a cord. I still don't like having to worry about a cord for the goggles, but it's there. And maybe someday we'll have a really good option. I could still run it without a cord and get a transmitter out of my PC, but eh, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look right. I mean, it might look more accurate, but whatever. So I like this building. Um, I had a really cool sequence with it that I just didn't record properly so you didn't get to see that but uh, this one's one of my favorite buildings on here but if you found this useful leave a like and a comment down below if you like this uh, option for it so it's wireless now I'm telling you I love it this is the only way I'm ever gonna use it I don't really notice any delay any latency there's probably some there not enough that I care maybe racing it would be a big deal um, I definitely need to spend more time on the racers for this simulator because I am terrible at it. Terrible. Right now you can get this uh, dongle, the XSR Sim, at Horse RC. That's where I got mine. There will be more places available later. I will link it down below and uh, try and keep that up to date as it shows up on more places because I'm sure it will. It won't be very long. The nice thing about having a simulator is if at first you don't succeed, you can try, try again. I tried this, I'll tell you, I tried this like 10 times. That was terrible. That was embarrassing. I hope I don't even show you that. Try, try again. Try, try again. Try, try again. Or we're gonna get it this time. I can feel it. I can feel it. Oh, except it. Uh, that's a wall. And we'll... It's so slow. It feels like it's falling too slow. Doesn't it feel like it's falling too slow? And we'll try, try again. I swear it feels like it's feel falling too slow. Maybe it's just a huge building. I need to go in on the other side. There's the big gap that I didn't hit. It's a huge gap. There we go. This is it. Try, try again. I'll count that. Woo!